So this is the final lecture of this particular chapter. This is on flow measurement. We've covered a lot of this before in previous chapters, but uh, this is a nice review and it does add some additional content. Throughout the years, many devices have been developed that measure the volumetric flow or the velocity of a fluid passing through a pipe or closed conduit. Each device has a specific application and the choice depends upon the required accuracy, the cost, the amount of the flow, and the ease of use. In this lecture, we will describe some of these more common devices used for flow measurement. One of the most common is what's known as the Venturi flow meter. Uh, this is simply a, a pipe that has a, has a reduction and a, uh, it uses a piezometer ring. And so you know, I think back in chapter uh, maybe four, we actually uh, applied the Bernoulli and continuity equations to come up with the equation to determine the flow at the throat, which is here. Uh, pretty easy to calculate. One of my engineers do to uh, make this a little bit more accurate is that since the Bernoulli equation doesn't directly account for any friction losses within the flow, engineers usually modify the equation by multiplying it by an experimentally determined vent Venturi discharge coefficient, CV. This coefficient represents the ratio of the actual average velocity in the throat to its theoretical value. So manufacturers typically uh, produce a, a chart that, that sort of gives you a way to, to uh, calculate the actual velocity since the actual formula for the, uh, that we showed on the previous slide is a theoretical value. So, uh, you know, experimentally, they, uh, makers of the Venturi meter actually produce their own chart. They come up with a correction factor, CV, that's a function of the Reynolds number. So, it, you know, based on the Reynolds number, you come in, you get your CV value, and you multiply that by the theoretical uh, velocity. Uh, so here is the, is, is the actual velocity. So therefore, the flow rate, which is Q, uh, V times A, is given by the following equation, where this is the area uh, where, you know, D is the diameter of the pipe at the, at the throat. Another common device is a nozzle meter. Uh, you see these uh, every now and then. They're, uh, uh, it basically has a, instead of a Venturi meter, it uses this kind of restriction that reduces the diameter. So you got a, a diameter of the pipe, and you got a smaller diameter, and you got a, a pressure test points P1 and P2. Um, so here, engineers use an experimentally determined nozzle discharge coefficient CN to account for the friction losses caused by the turbulence within the flow. So again, based on what Reynolds number you have, uh, you come up and you come across and you get a, C, a CN value. Um, this flow rate uh, can uh, uh, be calculated using the, follow the, the equation shown below. And again, it's similar to the Venturi uh, meter equation, but a, a different value for, for the CN value. Another type of meter is what's known as an orifice meter. And again, it's, it's very similar to the in design. It just has a, a restriction like so. And so you, again, you have, you have a new coefficient. So if you know D1 and D2, uh, and you know the Reynolds number, you can come in here and you can get, uh, you know, so you have to, like on the previous slide, it, you have a, a coefficient beta that's a ratio of the diameters. Uh, so you have to calculate that first and figure and then come up with the Reynolds number, find what beta value you're on, then come over and get this, the, the discharge coefficient CO, and then you use the following formula. So of these three basic meter types, which one is the, is the, the best? Uh, the Venturi meter, it's, uh, it's the most accurate because the losses within it are minimized. The orifice meter is the least expensive and it's very easy to install, uh, but it's also the most inaccurate. Uh, so regardless of which meter is selected, it's important to be installed along a straight section of pipe that is long enough to establish a fully developed flow. So this is the end of, uh, of chapter 10. And uh, I'll see you in the next lectures.